All right, part two. So in part one, we understood why the T wave points the same direction as the QRS in normal circumstances, even though repolarization is an opposite event. And the reason is that while depolarization goes from endocardium to epicardium, these sub-epicardial myocytes have a, have a unique characteristic that makes them repolarize faster. So repolarization actually progresses in the opposite direction, and that's why electrically it ends up being uh, looking similar with a positive T wave. So now we're going to ask, okay, so what? And we're going to get into one of the abnormal states that I alluded to um, in the first video. And that specifically is going to be when you have a left bundle branch block or a paced rhythm. So first, just an important assertion, which is that when you have a left bundle branch block, an abnormally wide QRS uh, or a paced rhythm, the T wave should be expected to point opposite of the QRS as opposed to our normal narrow QRS T wave in the same direction. So let's look at why that happens. We're going to draw our heart again. And here's the his Purkinje system again. But there's a problem now. And that problem is that the left bundle is broken. And whereas the right ventricle depolarizes as expected, the left ventricle ends up depolarizing kind of lengthwise. And that's why it takes longer and leads to a wide QRS, um, but let's look at why the T wave then is affected also. By the way, again, in a right ventricular paced situation, it's a very uh, similar scenario, right? So let's take this chunk of myocardium and blow it up just like we did before and look at what's happening at a cellular level. That was a bad circle, sorry. So here's the endocardium, right? Here's the epicardium. But now the depolarization is going this way. Here, by the way, are still the positive and negative electrodes of lead two. Um, but let's look at the cells in the direction of depolarization. So initially resting potential, the cells are negative on the inside. The extracellular fluid is all positive. And because of that, there's no electrical field. You have just your isoelectric PR segment. And when depolarization starts from here, the sodium rushes in, the outside turns negative, the inside turns relatively positive. So you have a negative to positive electrical field kind of aligning with lead two. And it's why you end up with a positive QRS here. And eventually, the depolarization completes, and you have all negative on the outside, um, everything's the same, no electrical field, you have another isoelectric uh, flat line, that's your ST segment. So now um, we are ready to repolarize, right? And remember that the unique feature of the repolarization in the normal scenario, endocardium to epicardium, was that these cells were faster at repolarizing. But now that we're depolarizing, now that we depolarized abnormally lengthwise, that unique special alignment is gone. And all the cells here are on equal footing. So the ones that depolarized first are gonna repolarize first. Calcium channels, sodium potassium, you end up recreating the extracellular positive and the resting intracellular negative and in this moment mid repolarization you actually have an opposite electrical field uh, outside the cells that points in the opposite direction of lead two and thus here you end up with a negative t wave so once again in a bundle branch block or a paced rhythm when the ventricle is depolarizing lengthwise it should be expected that the T wave be opposite the QRS as opposed to um, a normal scenario of a narrow, narrow QRS and a concordant T wave.